Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So I've been using the PlayStation 5 for just over three months now, and after hundreds of hours of gaming, I think it's time I give you my updated thoughts. Is it any good? What issues have I had? And is it really worth upgrading from the PS4? I'm going to show you some gameplay, what I like, dislike, what I actually think needs improvement, as well as the controller and what I miss about the PlayStation 4. Today's video is sponsored by Stereo, which is an app where I've been hosting some of my live Q&A shows recently. So if you want to join me for my next live show next week, make sure you click the link in the description and download and sign up today. Now I've said this before probably four times in other videos, but the DualSense controller is a game changer. It really is the best controller I've ever used. So it still feels like a DualShock 4 controller from the PS4, but just bigger and heavier, but still familiar. In fact, after using it for just the first day, I instantly preferred it over the old controllers. The haptic feedback or the vibration of the controller is awesome. It's not just like a rumble like we've had before. It reacts to what you're doing in every game and it can feel totally different. So depending on what the developers have chosen to do with it, the controller provides vibration as you're walking or driving over different surfaces. Even as you shoot a gun in Cold War, the controller kind of reacts and you can really feel it. Now in Dirt 5 or WRC 9 for example, as you're driving along the road, whether you're on gravel or on tarmac, you can actually feel this through the controller. And then there's the adaptive triggers, which for a lot of games I've played works really, really well. Now, I love the fact that they actually change depending on what you're doing. So as you say, pull a trigger in Cold War to shoot a gun, you can feel the resistance like it's got an elastic band inside the trigger. But as soon as you fire, the resistance goes. Or when you're driving, you can actually feel the wheel spinning through the trigger as the resistance changes depending on the road surface that you're on. Now this definitely is a next gen feature and it's not something I actually anticipated being just as good as it is. So the motion controls built into the controller are great and the touchpad works really well, although other than Astro's Playroom, I don't think I've used it much. It's also got a built in speaker and microphone, a feature that I've never used apart from by accident. Now it's great if you don't have a headset, but the number of times I've jumped into Cold War for a quick game, in, not in a party, and I've realized that the mic is still on. So I can see a lot of people getting caught out if you're not careful. I like the fact that it's a USB-C, so although it comes with a cable, and I'm using the dock anyway, at least you can use any USB-C cable that you've got lying around the house. Now the PlayStation icon button on the controller, if you tap it, it will bring up the quick menu across the bottom, that's pretty cool. And now, I'm sure this didn't work at launch, but if you press and hold the button, it will then take you straight home into the dashboard, so that's pretty easy to use. Now I would actually like to see this changed, so something that I would like to see would be a single tap would bring up the menu, as we already see, a double tap would take you home, and maybe a long press would turn off the controller or turn off the console, like what we see on the Xbox. So over the last few months, I've actually played a lot of different games, and everything that I've played has looked, sounded, and performed so, so well. Now the first game that I played, which was free and I recommend everyone playing, was Astro's Playroom. So it's a proper fun game to play, and it shows off the controller's capabilities. Also, it's an easy plat if you're a trophy hunter too. Next was Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's up there with one of my most favorite games. It's got a great story, it runs incredibly smoothly. Now I was playing this in 60 frames per second, which you obviously can't see from this video, but it's absolutely awesome. Now there are actually three different gaming modes for this. You've got Fidelity, which runs at 30 frames per second, and it has ray tracing enabled. You've got Performance Mode, which runs at 60 frames per second, but ray tracing is disabled. And then you've got the new mode, which wasn't available at launch, but this is Performance RT, and this runs at 60 frames per second with ray tracing enabled. But if you've played the original Spider-Man, I definitely recommend picking this one up. I've played loads of Cold War, which in 120 frames at 4K looks incredible. Now, I've never properly gamed on a PC before, which means I've not experienced 120 hertz, and on the PS5, it does not disappoint. Now you'll obviously need a TV or a monitor that supports HDMI 2.1, 120Hz and VRR to really make the most of what the PS5 has to offer, which fortunately for me, the 77CX I'm using, well that does. But yeah, Cold War plays really really well on the PS5, and the adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback works awesome as well. So I get loads of questions and comments on my videos, which I always read and reply to, but recently I've been hosting live shows over on Stereo to answer even more of your questions. Last week I actually hosted two shows, and I talked about the PlayStation 5 and Next Gen Gaming, and another one was about how I grew my Instagram account to 50,000 followers, and I gave loads of tips and tricks for that. But if you've not heard of it, Stereo is an audio-only social media app, and it lets you live broadcast your show while listening and responding to voice messages as they come in. 
Now, I will be running even more of these shows over on the Stereo app as it's just so easy to use. My next show, which I've already scheduled, will be about YouTube and it'll be about my YouTube channel growth so far. It's going to be a live show and it'll be covering how I grew to 70,000 subs in a year, the equipment that I use, the revenue, the tips, the tricks, and hopefully all of your questions answered. But here's a snippet from last week's show. Do you think there is going to be a PS5 Pro version of this console? Well, funny, we were actually talking about that right at the beginning at of the, the show, start, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. ultimately, we don't think there will, well, there will be, probably eventually, but I don't think there will be for at least another two or three years. I really don't. And if, and if they do, if they do mm-hmm. bring out a PS4 Pro, um, it will be for cash. <laughs> it won't be because they actually need, <laughs> let's be honest, they're going to be doing it because yeah. they just want more money. They don't need a PS4 Pro, uh, sorry, a PS5 Pro, should I say. So yeah, if you'd like to join me on my next show talking about my YouTube journey where you can ask me almost anything at all about my channel, click the link, download the app and follow me today. It would be awesome to see you there. So other games that I've been playing include Sackboy, Destruction All-Stars, which was a free PS Plus game, Dirt 5, Watch Dogs, WRC 9, Neo, Demon Souls and loads more. Now they all look, feel and sound great on the PS5. The graphics, even for the remastered Neo 1 and 2, are great and a noticeable step up in quality. Now I imagine over the next couple of years or so as more games are released, that is when we'll really see what the PS5 is capable of. And as for PlayStation 4 games, whether that's disc or digital, well actually 99% of those games do play and they run great on the PS5. In fact they run quicker and better than they did on the PS4. So if like me you've got a library of games that you want to take with you across to the PS5, well now you can. And the fact that 99% of the PS4 games are playable on the PS5, You can either download them from the store if it's a digital purchase, or you just insert the disc into the console and play it. Some of the PlayStation 4 games that I've played so far on the PS5, well that includes Cyberpunk, Mafia, Concrete Genie, Tomb Raider, Need for Speed Heat and Tony Hawk. Now they all look great still, I've had no issues at all, and I've also had no problems with transferring game saves and continuing where I left off. Also, if you are still using a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5 at the same time, well you can actually have both consoles on and playing, and it won't kick you out of one. Remember that with the PlayStation 5, you do get loads of free games too when you buy the console, and that's part of the PlayStation Plus collection. Now these include games like Days Gone in glorious 60 frames per second, God of War, The Last of Us, and Ratchet and Clank. Now I've played most of these already, and I've played them previously on the PlayStation 4, but I will definitely be playing these again on the PlayStation 5, especially those that have been upgraded in terms of frames per second. Then on top of that, if you're paying for PlayStation Plus, which for me is an absolute no-brainer, well, you also get free games every month to download and keep. So take February, for example. We got Destruction All-Stars, Control, and Concrete Genie. Now, the speed of this console at loading almost anything is just so quick. The boot-up time, the load time, the multitasking, all of it's just so fast. Now, I take it for granted now as I obviously use it daily, and I've kind of gotten used to it. But only the other day I turned on the PlayStation 4 just to record some footage and I realised just how slow and sluggish that console used to be. And this is a PlayStation 4 Pro. So with the PlayStation 5, whether you're booting it from rest mode or completely off, it's quick. But that's not really where you notice or need the speed, it's where you're actually using it on a day-to-day basis. So switching between games or loading up menus, especially when you're in a game already, is great. So on the PlayStation 4, if you were playing a game and you needed to return to the dashboard or go into the settings and change something really quickly, it would take you 30 to 40 seconds to actually do the task because it would take so long to do. Whereas with the PlayStation 5, it's just so smooth and it's effortless. And jumping into games is really quick as well. So here I'm loading up Miles Morales. Now I'm not going to speed this up, I'm not going to cut it at all. I'm also not going to do it as fast as possible. So once a menu loads up, I choose the game save that I want to play. I then obviously press continue and within a few seconds the game is loaded. Now this took less than 17 seconds from the dashboard and I'm already playing the game. That's absolutely rapid and this is the same for most games that I've played. Now there is a switcher tab and that would lead you to believe that it's the same as the Xbox Quick Resume but it isn't. So the Quick Resume lets you switch between games and it resumes from the exact part of the game that you were last at which is absolutely incredible on the Xbox. However, on the PlayStation 5, it does not work in the same way. It's more of a recent game button. So if you press it, it closes the game that you're currently on, and then it opens the other one. Nothing more than that. It doesn't save the current state, and it won't return you from the exact moment where you left it. But as I say, I've definitely taken the speed of this console for granted. But it also means I'm never sat here waiting for menus or options to load. It reacts super fast, and it's done within seconds. At no point do I ever feel frustrated that it's not performing as I expect. 
Now, don't quote me on this, but I am sure games are downloading quicker as well. Now, I assume this is down to the SSD rather than the hard drives that were previously had, but it's definitely noticeable. Now, the memory or the available storage on the PlayStation 5 is pretty poor. I'm actually quite disappointed in it. So when I had the PlayStation 4 Pro, well, that had a 2 terabyte internal storage. Now, I never needed an external drive for that. Whereas with the PlayStation 5, well, that comes with just 825 gigabytes. That's internal memory. Of that, only 667 is actually usable. I'm already deleting games, which isn't great after only a few months. I mean, maybe Call of Duty needs to ship with its own SSD. But the PlayStation 5, well, that should have come with a 2 terabyte SSD drive, or at least support external drives from launch. Now, I am using an SSD drive for my PlayStation 4 games, but as of now, you cannot store PlayStation 5 games on an external drive. They have to stay on the internal memory. So I know there is a divide when it comes to the look and the design of the console, but I actually really like it. So whether it's laid down like mine or it's stood up, I think it looks absolutely fine. So when it's off, there are no lights at all on the front. And when it's in standby or rest mode, there's like a kind of like an orange glow at the top. You've got the LEDs at the top. And then when it's on, it goes from blue to white. And I think that looks pretty clean overall. Now the face plates are removable, which means that you can take them off and you can wrap them, you can spray them or you can change them. Now I've recently ordered myself the matte black plates from Dbrand. So maybe in a couple of months or so when that turns up, I'll be able to show those off. Now maybe we will also see some themed or custom ones from PlayStation themselves in the future, but that'd be interesting to see. But this must be the easiest console that we've ever had to be able to customise. Overall, I think the UI or the user interface of the PlayStation 5 is really clean. I think it's a nice step up from the PlayStation 4 and what we're used to seeing. Now, the fact is, it's also in 4K now, and that really shows as it's super, super sharp. And the menus look really nice as well. Games and media are now split into two subheadings at the top, as you can see here across the top. Now, I never go into media, so I don't really use that area at all. Now, each game has its own theme. So while you're navigating around the dashboard, if you land or you stop on a game as you're kind of swiping through, it will now show a different background and it will sometimes play music or a theme tune as well if the developer has chosen to do so. So if you go into the full game library, you can actually see here all of the games that you've previously purchased. So here are my digital games, for example, you can scroll through and you can re-download those again. Then if you tab across, you can actually see the installed games or the ones that you currently have installed on the console. So as I have both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games installed, if you scroll down the list, they're actually split out into two categories again. So at the top, you've got your PlayStation 5 games. So I've got a few here. And as you scroll down, you've got the PlayStation 4 games. Now, actually, it was only when filming this did I realise that I've got Dirt 5 installed on both the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5. But yeah, I think this is really nice. I think it looks nice. It's really clean and it's really easy to navigate. So the settings area of the PlayStation 5 is pretty boring. It's exactly the same as the PlayStation 4, but that's fine. I mean, it needs to feel familiar so you can get straight to the setting when you need to change it. Now go back to the PlayStation icon that's on the controller. Now if you actually tap this, it will bring up a kind of like a quick launcher menu across the bottom. Now I like this because it lets you jump between the different options or the different settings that you need instead of returning to the home screen. So for example, you've got friends, you've got parties, you've got your sound settings and your mic settings. Now you can actually add and remove from this area as well. So if you press the option button on the controller, it will then bring up an option and you can actually delete or you can add to the different settings that you wish to see. However, there are two things that I really miss from the PlayStation 4, and they've not actually brought it across to the PlayStation 5. And the first one being is the ability to change or install your own theme or wallpaper. So on the PlayStation 4, I always had this theme, and this was my kind of my background and my wallpaper. But I understand with the PlayStation 5, as you navigate through the different games, the background obviously changes to a different theme. But it would be great if you had maybe like a home dashboard and you could install your own theme. Maybe it's something we'll see in the future. The second thing that I miss is being able to store your games in folders. Now this is something that I always did on the PlayStation 4, and this was mainly to split the games up between myself and my children. Now, whereas now, that is not the option. You've just got a long list of games across the top, as you would have seen if you didn't use the folder option in the PlayStation 4. Now obviously it shows you the most recent games first, but it doesn't actually show you all of the games. So if you've got maybe, you know, 30 games for example, it will only show you the most recent ones across the top, then you need to go into the full library to see the rest. Something else that I really don't like is the way that the trophies are shown. Now, I mean, visually they look great, you know, they're really nice, but navigating and seeing what trophies you need or still have to get, it feels a lot more effort than before. Now, I'd rather see a vertical list or at least give us the option to change it between horizontal and vertical. Now, as I buy most of my games digitally, I actually spend a bit of time in the App Store and it's so much faster to navigate, especially over the PlayStation 4 again. Now the search feature works really well and the ability to filter between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games is awesome. 
So you can see here the PlayStation 5 games are currently available at a glance. I also use the mobile app to add games to my wishlist. And as you can see, you can also see that on the store on the PlayStation as well. So you've got a little wishlist icon here, along with everything that you expect to see underneath. So although the console has been awesome, I've really, really enjoyed it over the last three months, I have had a couple of issues. Now, most of these were within the first couple of weeks, and since then, I've not had any problems at all. So I just want to start by saying that. Now, the first issue was games crashing. So I experienced this a lot. Within the first couple of weeks, it was almost like every day, it felt like, especially when I was playing Cold War. Now, this could have been an issue with the game, or it could have been the console. Obviously, it's hard to know. Now, what would actually happen is the game itself would just error out, would have an error on the screen, and the game would just close. It would go back to the dashboard and have to boot it up again. Now, the second option I had, and I've only had this twice, and it's happened on two separate days, and the console completely shut down. Now, this was only shortly after turning it on, so maybe within the first 20 minutes or so, and the console would turn on, and then it would just go to a black screen, completely shut down, and it wouldn't turn back on. So the button on the front of the console, the button on the controller, nothing would allow the console to switch back on. And after about 30 or 40 seconds or so, eventually it would come back on. And to be honest, the first time it happened, I really thought the console was broke. I thought this was it. It's gone two weeks in. I have to get a replacement already. But it's not happened again. So within the first couple of weeks, it did it. And I've not had the issue since. So although the console is quiet, like whisper quiet, the disk drive on this is actually quite noisy. Now, it only spins for about 10 seconds at boot up if you've got a disk installed. And maybe once an hour during gameplay. But it's pretty loud. Now, luckily, I don't play many physical games because most of them are digital, but if I did, this would definitely annoy me. And I've also had no problems with heat as well. I've never heard the fans kicking in either. So comparing that to the PlayStation 4, if you played for a few hours on Cold War, for example, the fans would have kicked in and you could overhear it on your microphone. Whereas the PlayStation 5, it runs whisper quiet and it's so, so cool as well in comparison. So over the last few months, I have picked up a few accessories for it. Nothing crazy, because there isn't much available. I've got an extra controller, I've got the charging dock, I've got the Astro A20s, and I've got that SSD drive that I use for my PS4 games. But if you want to see more about the accessories that I have, I actually created a dedicated video on that a couple of weeks ago, so feel free to check that out after this one. So summarising all of the things I would like to change about the PlayStation 5. I would like to see wallpapers and folders added. I think the ability to be able to add your own themes like we did on the PlayStation 4, that needs to be brought across. I think the trophy list needs to be sorted out. The horizontal view just does not work for me. Visually, it's fine, but navigating it is a real pain. I'd also increase the internal storage SSD for the PlayStation 5. Obviously, that can't be retrospectively changed on the console that I've already got, but future PlayStation 5s, they need a one or two terabyte drive at least. And they need to be able to support more external SSDs that will allow you to put PlayStation 5 games on them, not just the PlayStation 4. So if you've not got a PlayStation 5, this question is probably for you. Would I recommend getting a PlayStation 5? Yes, 100%. You have to get a PlayStation 5. It's got an awesome controller, incredible exclusives, and it's stupidly fast at loading games. Plus, the option to remove the plates if you don't like the look of the console is really easy. So you can pop the plates off, you can change the colour, you can wrap it, you can spray it, whatever you want to do. On top of that, if you've got a PlayStation 4 already and you've got a library of games that you want to bring with you, well, you can. You can literally bring your PlayStation 4 library, whether it's digital or physical, and you can play it on the PlayStation 5. In fact, it will probably run smoother and better on the PlayStation 5 than it already does on your PlayStation 4. So it's overall a far better experience. Now, I did actually do a comparison a while back on the PlayStation 5 versus the Xbox Series X, and I picked a winner. Spoiler, it was the PlayStation 5. But if you want to check that out, then you can after this video, and I actually go through and I compare the different features of both consoles. Well, you've just made it to the end of this video, so thank you. Hopefully, if you're on the lookout for a PlayStation 5, this has helped you and you're already out there scouting the websites looking for a PlayStation 5, even though it's practically out of stock everywhere. If you've already got a PlayStation 5, what do you think? Do you think I've kind of summarized it up? Would you agree with all of my comments, what I like and I dislike? And if you drop a nice PS5 in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up as I know you're still here at the end of this ridiculously long video. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button as it helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also, don't forget that I am doing some live shows over on Stereo. Click the link in the video description, download the app, and I will definitely see you there. And you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.